When you are installing a custom aftermarket sound system with upgraded speakers, amplifiers, and subwoofers, there is another very important upgrade that we need to add. We need to do some sound treatment. By sound treating a vehicle, we lower the ambient noise level in the vehicle, which means we don't have to drive our speakers as hard to overcome road noise, we can hear more detail in the music, and we can prevent annoying vibrations and rattles. So I am currently working on building a custom car audio system in a Chevy Equinox and it belongs to a very important customer, my dad. So what does the sound treatment process look like? Let's get on into it. So I want to start with tackling the back of the Equinox. Now the subwoofer that I'm gonna be using is going to be in the OEM location here, but it's not going to be the stock subwoofer. I'm doing something a little bit different. I'll have more details for you guys about that soon. I obviously have all the trim removed now. I removed a lot of these things already just to install these amplifiers in the previous video. Now what I need to do is I need to make sure that this surface is nice and clean. Cleaning the surface is very important. You don't want to have any dirt or any oils on this or it's going to prevent having max adhesion to that with our sound treatment. For the sound treatment materials for this project, I'm going to be using this new material from this company called Sound Shield. These guys are partnered up with Mobile Solutions and you can see that the material comes in roll form. If we take a look at the specs on the container here, it has a total thickness of 4.5 millimeters and it's actually made up of three different layers. There's this backing material which protects the adhesive, so obviously we remove that. You have the adhesive layer, then you have a butyl rubber layer that's 1.5 millimeters, then there's an aluminum foil core, and then on top of that is three millimeters of closed cell acoustic foam. This has a new adhesive to the market that I'm told is extremely tacky and has a very good hold. And you can see within one roll, we get 11 square feet of coverage and the dimensions are 20 inches by 79 inches. So I've got this piece from that roll. To give you guys an idea, here's a 15 inch sub. And if you see on top of this piece of material, it is a big chunk of material. Something that you guys always ask on these sound deadening videos is how do you know how much material you need? It's really not that difficult. Let's say that I wanna determine how much I need for just doing this back area here. If we take a tape measure and we can see it's about two foot deep. And then if we measure this way, it's about four and a half feet, but we'll estimate and call it five just to have a little extra. So two foot by five foot, that's 10 square feet. So I should be able to pull off doing this rear bottom area with one roll. Let's see how well this stuff does though as stopping noise. As you know, your vehicle is made up of sheet metal. Let's cut a small piece off and apply it to this other piece. Ready guys, here's a good comparison. So really clangy, dead. So we know this stuff works, let's actually start applying it. I'm going to start with measuring out this area here. A couple of things you're gonna want for this are a good pair of gloves to protect your hands, a really nice sharp knife where you can swap out the blades, and a silver Sharpie comes in handy for marking on top of this black material. I then cut a rectangular shape of those same dimensions. Now I take that piece and I position it and you'll notice that I push some of the threaded studs through it in order to mark those bolt locations. I also push the material down into the corners and I try to avoid any cutting inside the vehicle itself so I'm using that silver sharpie to outline where I need to cut. Next, I trim that excess material away. Now I never throw away any of my scraps because there will inevitably be some small areas in the vehicle that I'll need to tuck these into. Now the next thing I'm gonna show you guys, this is life changing. You definitely want this punch set if you want a nice professional looking finish. I'll put a link to it down in the video description. The way we use this is we pick out our proper hole size and then remember where I pushed those studs through earlier, I can take this and put it over that and then use a hammer to give myself a perfect round cut. Now I can remove that backing paper, put the piece in place, and a really, really important step is you want a nice wooden roller to secure the material against the sheet metal. So you can see how this can be a really time consuming process, but the results are definitely worth it because it lowers the ambient noise level in the vehicle. We'll be able to hear more of those fine details in the music, which is really important for sound quality. 
And even if you are more focused on loud output and SPL, by applying these materials, we're removing the ability of the panels to actually vibrate. Vibration is loss of energy. The more that we can prevent vibration, the louder our system will be. Now I've added a couple of pieces here and it reminded me of something that I wanna to mention to you guys. I see a lot of times with this material where guys will completely, absolutely cover every last square inch of sheet metal. I've done it myself. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you are on a budget or trying to make use of a limited amount of material, I have some suggestions for you. So first off, focus on flat areas first. So this is a relatively flat area. This is relatively flat. This area in the middle here is flat. So I'll be addressing that. If we look up underneath here, this is all flat. So I'll do this area as well. But if you're trying to make do with limited materials, you don't need to address areas like this right here, this curve. You don't need to worry about this. The reason for that is just the way that the strength is in sheet metal. This area here, it has curvature to it, so it's not gonna be nearly as likely to vibrate as an area like that. So moral of the story, focus on the flat areas first because those are the low hanging fruit. Those are gonna be the most likely to vibrate and then focus on areas around where your actual speaker is going to be. So this is not a show car. It's not a competition car. If you have a competition car, yes, go ahead, gut the whole interior, take out the roof, fully sound treat this, cover every last inch of the sheet metal with sound treatment materials. But as this is a daily driven vehicle, I wanted to focus more on getting the performance where we can while still remaining within a reasonable budget. Now there's another thing that we need to address when we're doing this sort of targeted, efficient sound treatment. And that is we wanna look for other sources of potential vibration noise other than just the sheet metal itself. One problem that we can sometimes have is wire harnesses. So in this vehicle, anywhere that's near a speaker location, like in the front doors, or in this case, the subwoofer, I'm going to want to treat this. To do this, I'm using just this closed cell foam material. What we're going to do is we are going to wrap it around the wire harness and then secure it using some cloth tape. So here's that wire harness completely protected with that closed cell foam. There's no way that's making any vibration noise. And then I also balled up the factory harness that connects to the factory subwoofer. We're not using that anymore, but I'm not gonna cut it just in case we wanna return this vehicle to stock. So I just wrap that up there. That way it can't vibrate either. So we're good to go here in the rear of the vehicle. We've targeted the important areas. Now to move on to the front doors. So the first step for sound treating a door is we of course need to remove this door panel so we can get it out of the way. Now, usually for door panels, what you're gonna to need to do is you need to look for areas where it's bolted to the actual door of the vehicle. So on this car, this little plate was right here. This is usually a good spot to look is behind the door handle. And then you usually wanna look behind the door pole as well. Sometimes you'll find that there'll be another panel that you can kind of pry away around some of the switches that might be hiding a bolt. It really varies car to car. I know for this vehicle, it's just those two areas. So now I can carefully start going around the outside outside and prying the door away. For doing a door like this, there's four main areas that we want to address. Area number one is we wanna address inside the actual cavity here. So this is actually the outside of the body of the door. We wanna sound treat the inside of that. Area number two is we wanna sound treat this metal here. And you'll notice that I removed that vapor shield. Our new piece is going to act as the vapor shield. Now the comment that always comes up is, well, what about you know the mechanics of the window raising assembly? What if you need to access these to repair them? There's a couple of different ways to go about this. One way is I could make some ABS plates that fit here and here. And then that way I wouldn't have to sound treat over this entire area, but I only have a limited amount of time with this vehicle, it would be more resources and more of an investment to do this. So again, this kind of brings in the whole conversation of thinking about your design goals. If this was a show car or a competition vehicle with no expenses spared, yes, we could take the time to fabricate these, but in more of a daily driver, normal scenario, you're just going to cover this up with all of the sound treatment material. 
You're still gonna get great performance, improve the sound quality of the speaker, but everything is about trade-offs. So in this case, the trade-off is if we do have to repair this, we're gonna have to deal with removing some sound treatment material. Final note in regards to having to repair anything in the door though, I've had several vehicles that I have driven into the ground, 200,000 plus mile vehicles, and I've never had to deal with any sort of mechanical issue within the door. Not to say that it doesn't happen, but I rather have great sound in the vehicle than worry about the off chance that something might just happen to go wrong with the door when it really isn't that big a deal to just remove that material. Back into it now, area number three that we're gonna worry about, this is the door panel. So we want to sound treat the back side of the door panel too. And then area number four, we wanna pay special attention to the speaker area, much like we did in the rear of the vehicle. For sound treating this first area inside here, we're going to use a bunch of squares that I've cut of equally spaced material. I like doing this because you only have a limited amount of space to actually get this inside the door. And again, for this project we're looking to make the most efficient use of materials so having about 10 of these on this inside door skin spaced out evenly and a couple more focused directly behind the speaker is going to provide a great result all right so we've treated the inside cavity here i put down 10 tiles now we need to turn to number two doing this inside door skin for this part of the door i start with applying some special tape that allows me to capture a template i'll put a link to this tape down in the video description and you guys can see here that what I've done is I've drawn out each of the different hole locations where I need to use my punch and then for areas that are a little bit bigger than the punch for access to bolts and things like that I've marked a larger circle or rectangle that I need to cut. See these holes here around the outside? These are where the fasteners that are part of the door panel go to actually hold it in place. I don't wanna mess with the fitment of that. So all of my material is going to sit completely inside of this edge. So now I can carefully remove my tape template from the door and put it on a piece of material and then start making my cuts. So here's a finished look after I applied all of this. You can see we have nice clearance for the mounting holes that hold the door panel on. We've got some cutouts for these bolts here so that we know where they're at. And I also added this piece here and this piece here to my original cutout. There were just some holes in the door panel. You can see one right here. I just wanted to cover that up. That way it makes the back side of this door panel like one big speaker enclosure. You'll also notice that I avoided this area here. This has a lot of bends to it, so it's already good and strong. And this is where the door pull assembly is. So I don't want to interfere with any of the movement of that. So I'm leaving that area blank. Also by the speaker, GM actually did a pretty good job here of making this part of the sheet metal really strong. I noticed they actually have this roll on the edge of the sheet metal, which is good. Not all manufacturers always do that but that roll on the edge there does add a lot of strength to this part of the panel so that's good I just don't want to add any sound treatment in this area here quite yet because it might interfere with my custom mounting ring that I'm gonna have to make but I probably will add more later off camera next up here the back of the door panel they did actually have this kind of sound insulative material from the factory what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna carefully peel it back in just a couple of areas near the speaker here and I can re-glue this in place once I'm done but what I do want to sound treat is I want to pay some attention to these wire harnesses here I, I like to kind of move them around like look at this right here Can you guys hear that that would potentially vibrate, especially with the close proximity to the speaker. So I'm going to address this right here. I'm just gonna go along and do the wiggle test. Here's another potential vibration. So I'll clean that up. And then just to prevent a panel resonance in this area and this area near the speaker, I'm gonna do some light sound treatment there. So in these several different locations that actually hold this wire harness down, I first applied some cloth tape over that hole. That helps isolate between the plastic of the door panel and the plastic of the actual clip itself. By isolating between the two, they can't vibrate. I also completely wrapped this wire harness in the cloth tape and the closed cell foam, much like I did in the rear of the vehicle. So you can see how I took the time to cut some smaller, more defined pieces that perfectly fit into these different areas. 
A lot of these pieces are really small. That's why it pays off to save all of your scraps from earlier. I didn't have to cut any of this material from any of the new chunk out of the roll. I was able to use everything that was scrap. So now I can take this barrier and I'm just gonna hot glue it back into place using those same locations. And it basically looks factory, except for now we don't have a wire harness or any other vibration issues around the speaker. I did end up making one minor mistake. Some of you guys may have caught it. I accidentally completely blocked this thing in. I'd fished it inside the door just so it wasn't in my way when I was making my template. So just a heads up, try to avoid that. If it does happen to you, I just cut a really small hole and I was able to fish it back through. And then I just patched up that hole with another piece, which is something you'd probably want to do anyways, just to kind of hold that hole back together. These things happen, we are good to go now though. And I of course repeated everything that I did on the passenger side of the vehicle, on the driver's side as well. So next time you're looking to do an install, definitely consider some sound treatment and check out these guys Sound Shield. I'll put a link to them down in the video description. A big thank you to them for sponsoring this video. So what's next for this project? I need to get those two amplifiers wired up. I need to do all the speaker wire runs for the three-way custom component set up front. That, my friends, is coming up next. So if you're new here, I would love to have you as a subscriber. A special thanks goes out to Lonnie, Ali, William, Marcos, Michael, Steve, Emmanuel, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for helping make these videos possible. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.